Hello, I'm Tom and welcome to the Welsh Woodman Workshop. In tonight's project, we're going to be making some handles for these Roman knives. This is quite an unusual project. So this is one for a, a Roman reenactment group. This is a, a ro reproduction of a Roman chef knife. So a bit like a, a meat cleaver. And we have a Roman cooking knife. So these have been uh, forged from examples that have been found uh, in archaeological digs and I'm going to be making some handles to go along with them for this reenactment group. Hope you enjoy. So we're going to be using some ash to create the handles. Now traditionally this would be made with a pole lathe or potentially a spoke shave and a, a draw horse but I'm going to be using a modern technique in using a, a powered wood turning lathe. So the ash itself actually came from um, the farm where this reenactment group are, are based so I'm going to be using that, I've seasoned it out myself, just been waiting until it's dry enough to, to use. I've already rough turned it into these uh, cylindrical shapes so we can get our handle profile from these, making sure we're avoiding any of the, the splits. So I'm going to start off with the roughing gouge, so I'm using the centre of the roughing gouge, uh, the handle's down, the bevel's rubbing and you can see the shaving sort of coming over the, the top. So as this piece is dried out it's gone almost into a, an oval shape which is uh, pretty cool. So as soon as I get roughly into the round, I can start using more of the edges, so the wings of the roughing gouge. And that allows me to wear down the, the tool nice and equally, so when I'm taking it to the grinder, I'm not wasting tool steel. And also if you sharpen the, uh, the points of the, the wings, you can get a nice smooth cut off the, the wing, almost like a skew, like the, this example I'm showing here. So as soon as it's roughed out into the round shape again from that oval, I can start putting on my marking. So I'm marking out the length of the tang and I'll put another mark on with the skew chisel to indicate where I want to part this off later on. But I've avoided the cracks, so when, when the piece dried out it did have some cracks and I'm making sure they're not in my piece so it's nice and structurally strong. So I'm going to be using the skew chisel here, so I'm leading with my long point, I'm flipping it round to my short point and I'm going to do a planing cut across the entire piece. You can see the shaving sort of following the cut in front of the, the cut and I'm getting a really really smooth finish as a, a result of this. It's a good exercise to, to sort of practice to make sure you've got a nice uh, smooth piece and you get a lovely finish uh, off, a, off a skew chisel. Now if any of you are interested in a master of the skew, it's this guy called Steve Jones Woodworker 22, uh, amazing production turner. Uh, fifth generation of belief and his, his work with the skew is incredible. So I'm just cutting a cove at the moment in you can see my long stringy shavings in front of the cut and I want to sort of meet at the bottom of that cove and blend in uh, these curves so I'm just sort of arcing the tool as I'm doing that only cutting with one third of the tool. Now a far more efficient way in my opinion of cutting these is probably with a, a spindle spindle gouge and I'll show you a different technique later on uh, when I come to turning the handle for the for the big meat cleaver. So I'm just blending in my, my tool marks and I just want to do another sort of final cut around the, the back, blending in the, the back profile of the tool so it meets the, the contours of the hands, it's a bit more comfy as you're holding. So I've got this little cap piece that's going to go on the, the top to where the blade's going to be coming out. So I can measure them with my engineering calipers and just double checking my measurements there to make sure it'll fit. Now point to, to everyone, I have rounded over the corners on these engineering calipers. So I'm, there's probably engineers out there that are crying watching this but these were a cheap pair of calipers from Aldi in the, the random goods aisle next to the, uh, the crash helmets and the salad cream. And I'm just using these to get a really accurate sort of gauge to where the uh, the cap will fit on. As soon as I've got that, I can use the parting tool to part down to the width of the cap, so it will sit securely on top of the end of the knife. So I'm going to do my final sort of cut. Now these are my finishing cuts over the over the top of the piece. So I'm going to try and follow the profile of the handle, making sure that the, that the grain pattern is supported where possible. I might have to come back and do a, a few more cuts to make sure I get a, a clean finish, especially if I'm going to be cutting uphill so where the fibres aren't so much supported. So I'll come back and do that again. This is where I'm going to be parting off the 
the handle. I'm going to keep that on for some structural support until I'm ready to get rid of that. Now is the exciting bit next. Is I'm going to be doing the drilling. I've got my drill check in the headstock and I'm going to be drilling to the depth of the tang of the knife. Now I find this is a far more accurate way of drilling, putting the check in the headstock rather than holding the piece in a check and advancing the, the quill with a drill in it. So this is a tip I picked up from Gary Rant, so I'm just going to drill to my required depth. Notice my sleeves are all velcroed back so we wouldn't get them caught. And I've got the knife in the vise now and I'm going to tap on very, very gently the handle onto the tang. So I need to do this gently just in case the, the tang snaps. Another way I could do this is a burnt through handle. So you heat up the actual tang of the handle with a blowtorch and you burn the profile to the knife itself. So but luckily with my, my drilling technique, I managed to get this a really, really nice, tight fit, secure handle onto this. I don't think it's gonna move anytime soon, which should be good. Here we go. Okay, preparing for the meat cleaver. This time it's got a socketed um, attachment rather than a, a tang. So I'm going to lay out on my uh, block of ash where it needs to go. So I've got my taper so it stops there inside. I'm going to put a checking point on this so I can test the taper so I can take it off in between centres. So I'm using a roughing gouge again just to get the, the meat of this out of the way and you can see I'm using it to put in that taper. Now I'm going to be measuring very shortly with my calipers again to make sure I get it down to the required depth so the taper of this piece fits really really accurately and it's going to hold on a bit like a Morse taper on the, the lathe so as it's hit onto the handle it'll be really really tight. Another way you could attach it is using like a wedge in the end of it a bit like you'd uh, attach a wedge mortise and tenant joint so I'm using the outside calipers there. Again, made sure my points have rounded over. Did that with a, a file before using the calipers, otherwise you'll get a nasty dig in. So I've got it down to the required depth with my parting tool. And I'm gonna do the same the other end. And all I've got to do then is turn the taper between those two points and I'll get a nice accurate uh, wedge shape as a result of this. So it's a little tip I picked up from making some chairs in the in the past so, and some tables with some traditional sort of Windsor style joints on them. So this is where I'm going to be parting off. This is always the fun part, parting all the way through. As soon as I'm getting to a point where I think I'm going to go through, I'm going to put my hand behind to support the piece and this time I'm going to be using a smaller, I think it's a one inch roughing gouge to actually put the profile but I wanted to show you the wings of this, how I'm going to use this to cut in this piece and I'm going to get a far quicker shape from this, so this one took me um, half the time the other one did with the, the skew, uh, mainly because I'm more used to using this as a, as a production tool than the, the skew itself. So I'm using the wing of the tool, a bit like a skew, and you can see it's picking up the cut, and the cut's trailing in, in front of the, the gouge. So I get these lovely sort of tiny shavings coming off this, and a smooth finish straight off the, the tool, which is pretty good. And cutting downhill to support that cut. And I've got a, a really cool knot in this piece as well. So I'm going to put a, a finish on this next, and the finish I'm going to be using is a traditional sort of beeswax finish. And just indicating where I'm parting off the, the piece with a knife parting tool, so I haven't left myself too much room. So this is a block of beeswax going to go over the top, uh, hopefully give it a little bit of prevention from the weather. And Romans would have probably used beeswax as a, as a good source. We know they use wax tablets to write in, so it was available to them. So there's my profile. I'm going to part off the ends now. And something off camera you didn't see, I did test the, the wedge shape on the, on the knife to make sure it would fit uh, the profile itself. So I'm going to use the knife parting tool to part off. And it's my hands from behind, away from the check again. Sleeves velcroed up to make sure I don't get caught into the check. And then we have the knife profile handle. So again, I've got this wedge that should hold it nice and securely in shape. 
going to use the mallet to drive them home. A couple of knocks with the mallet. Just going to test then how tight this is. We're going to try and twist it to see if it's going to move in the shaft. No, pretty tight there. Happy with that. So here we have it, two Roman knived turned handles, so quite rustic, but they would have been turned on a, a pole laser. That's the kind of look I wanted to go for. Yeah, these are pretty wicked looking. So I hope the reenactment uh, group really enjoy these and have good use out of them. Thank you ever so much for watching. If you've enjoyed tonight's project, please leave us uh, a thumbs up and a comment below. Always love reading and uh, replying to them. If you haven't done so already, please make sure you subscribe to the channel as that allows me to bring more videos like this your way. Hope you have a great night. Thanks for watching. Dielchenvaur, Norstar.